It's no secret that something went wrong with Destiny's story behind the scenes. Almost two years before Destiny's release in September 2014, Joseph Staten, Destiny's lead writer and design director, presented the story to Bungie Upper Management in a two-hour supercut of the game, and ultimately they were left unhappy with the narrative of the game saying it was too linear, and from then, they would overhaul and rework the game's narrative from scratch, ultimately becoming the game we know today. It's no surprise that many fans wish they got the original story, or at least something a bit better than what was delivered. And today we're going to take a look at what just might be that original version of Destiny created by Joseph Staten and his team. Old Russia. And I'm going to meet up with some of my friends, and together, we're going to explore the wild frontier on the other side of that wall. This original story was outlined in a very Cliff Notes fashion by someone who supposedly playtested Destiny before the overhaul. The Crow ends up being introduced earlier in the story in the place of the Exo Stranger. The story revolved around discovering that there was something wrong with the Speaker and the Traveler. As a Guardian you were abducted by this yet to be named group led by the Crow. During the second mission on Earth he swooped down and knocked you out and brought you to this secret base on Mars. There you met with some guardians that abandoned the Traveler, the Speaker, and the Light. It was led by the Crow, the Exo Stranger, and one or two other guardians who had lost their ghosts. He then goes on to say, It had this predictable plot where the Traveler was the cause of the collapse of the Golden Age because this group found out, through their travels, that the darkness was a spawn of the Traveler rather than its rival. Essentially, when the Traveler was brought to Earth, it unleashed the darkness and took over the majority of the technology that humanity used, turned it against them, and nearly wiped them out. As that happened centuries ago, the truth was twisted through the speakers that the Traveler protected Earth in its darkest moment, rather than destroying it. They send you to Venus to lure out a gatekeeper and steal its core, which supposedly held an AI that could help bring the truth to light about the Traveler and the speaker to the citizens of the city. Around this point, I recall going to Mars to retrieve the remains of another powerful AI that the Cabal was repurposing for their own use. Then at the end of that mission, the test group was sent about 10 hours further into the game where we assaulted a hive base on the moon. After the group discovered from an AI that the Hellmouth was a housing for a super weapon that could revive the Traveler from its dormant state so it could wreak havoc on humanity again. And that's all we really have from this person who supposedly playtested Destiny before the overhaul. But a lot of things mentioned in this story actually line up with a Kotaku article that dives deep into what happened behind the scenes during the development for Destiny. In the article it touches on a few more important details that would be in the original version of Destiny. For instance, this guy right here from the concept art was to be Rasputin, although later in a DLC it would be revealed that this Exo was being controlled by a Warmind. You would have to save this Exo from the Hive who kidnapped him and taken him to their Dreadnought, the same Dreadnought we would see released later in The Taken King. It was said that the entire last third of the main game took place on the Dreadnought, and we've seen the Dreadnought in a few trailers before Destiny released, supporting this even more. Osiris played a major role in the original version of Destiny as well and was described as an Obi-Wan Kenobi-like mentor that lived on an ancient Vex temple on Mercury. Osiris was like a guide for the player who had an assistant that we would come to know as the Exo Stranger. And this clip from the released version of Destiny always sounded like she was speaking with Osiris to me. I will. I will. I know. Will what? I wasn't talking to you, little light. I'm a ghost, actually. Many guardians fell. Strong ones. But you made it here. Yes, I'm listening. They are here, with me. Who's she talking to? Understood. You need my help. Other small details were made like the crow originally having a similar personality to that what we got with Cade 6. Charlemagne is a war mind on Mars, and descriptions of major 3-5 to five minute cutscenes at the end of every single story mission. And I gotta say, I really do wish we could play the original version of Destiny from start to finish because it sounded like it was going to be pretty damn great. 
Don't get me wrong though, Destiny has had some great story elements and lore that I've loved since its initial release. I really liked Prince Ulgen's character as we know him today, and what we got with Oryx and Rise of Iron content. But other characters I feel have been treated embarrassingly bad outside of the lore. Characters like Osiris, Rasputin, and various other lore legends like Anna Bray. For that reason, I'd really love to play the original version of the game and experience some of these characters the way they were intended to be and how they were written. Destiny 1's story and original vision to this day is the one that intrigues me the most, and it's a shame we'll never see that original script for the game. However, the story and the deep lore we did get throughout Destiny's first three years were honestly pretty incredible, and I'd like to pretend we haven't progressed the story past Rise of Iron. Pre-Destiny 2 Destiny is the one that I love most and what I consider to be canon in my head. To me, Destiny 2 and all of its story content besides Forsaken have not only been underwhelming, but completely destroyed any sense of mystery, wonder, or intrigue by retconning so much of the excellent deep lore from Destiny 1. So when I put Destiny 2 out of my memory and pretend it doesn't exist, that's when I continue to love the Destiny universe and the beautiful lore found inside.